you. You might do well to say good morning first. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning, Uncle Matthias. Morning. What is it? He wants you to be at home about ten this morning. Who well, does this? Who is he? The pastor, that's who. The pastor? I'm ready. Come on. Have you been a good girl? Let's go then. Come on, Nanny. Hey, don't fall, Nanny. Do you have your sausage and cheese? Mm, you'll end up as fat as I am the way you two think about food all the time. <laughs> don't be home too late. No, we won't. Goodbye, Grandfather. Goodbye, Heidi. <laughs> After you climb all that way, you won't worry about your geography. I have some food left. What good is that to me? You may have my sandwich if you like. Hmm? There's still sausage there. Maybe you'll get it, but only when we get up there. You know, Peter, I think my grandfather's the handsome and best beloved of all the those. We are going, huh? Mm-hmm. Go on, swear. I don't tell lies. Come on, Nanny. Today, no way. Why not? Because I said so. Oh, he said I could see the very start of the spring. This is the start of the spring. Is it? Where does the waterfall come from? All the way up the mountain. There's a lake there. Have you seen it? Yeah. Well, say, let's go there. Do I get another sausage? Oh, yes. If I can see the beginning of the waterfall. Tomorrow, then. It's too late now. We must go home. Matthias, didn't Peter tell you I was coming? Yes, he told me. I want to talk to you. I thought you'd wait for me. I have no time to talk. I have work to do. We all have work to do. I even used the time walking up here to think out next Sunday's sermon. Close up where I may. No, it's on patience. Oh, like chapter 21, verse 19. Why, yes. Ah, yes. In your patience possess ye your souls. Is that right? Yes, yes. That's the part. Uh, may I help? I'm sure you didn't come here to help break the grass. I wouldn't mind. It's healthy work. Do something to tell me. Mm, yes, the grass is so lovely up here. I've come to ask a favor. Me? Yes, you see, 
We'll be raising the new church bells next Sunday. It's customary for the children to do it. Your granddaughter would certainly enjoy it. I'd like her to take part in it. No. Heidi will not go down to the village. Oh? But in September, she'll have to go. You should have enrolled her in school last fall. This time, there can be no excuse. And who says so? The law says so. The law? Do you believe that I would send my Heidi down the mountain to school through snow and storm on winter mornings and then let her come up the mountain at night? Of course not. And nobody is asking you to do anything at all like that. But face the facts. She must go to school. It's for her own good. Come and stay in the village. Live with the people there. But everyone there hates me. And it's mutual. We keep our distance and we're all a lot better off. Oh, but you can't let her live here like a hermit. Heidi is mine. My responsibility. I'm the only one who can decide what's good for her. The only one. I know how good you've been. That's not the question. Look, when her Aunt Dita brought her to me over two years ago, nobody asked me then if I could care for her or not, but I can and I will. But Matthias, he could take her to court and prosecute you for negligence. Go on. I've saved up enough money to fight every court in Switzerland if I have to. Don't be foolish. I know what I'm doing. Let them leave Heidi alone. She's happy here with me. Well, this is the beginning of the waterfall. Oh, it's so beautiful. Where's the water come from, Peter? From the sky. But don't get the idea I'm going to take you up there, too. This is as high as I go. <laughs> Does that mountain have a name? Yeah, it's called Echo. Echo Mountain. Hello. Hello. You must be tired. I think I will. Thank you. You think that the new village bells will ring out peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That they'll feel kindlier toward me. You think I'll forgive and forget. Not so easy, Pastor. That's too bad. Tell me the truth. Why are you so bitter? I've never heard your side of the story, you know. I came to the village long after whatever it was caused this trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I don't blame you for not understanding. I wonder if I do. Human nature works so strangely. But up here, I've been by myself so long, I've had time to think. Close as I am now, between the mountains and the sky, I try to understand the difference between right and wrong. How about some wine? Yes. Well, 
I'll tell you the story. Make what you will of it. You probably have heard other stories in the village. I can imagine you find it all bewildering. Yes, of course. I'll tell you the truth, Pastor, I promise. It's not a long story. My wife died when she gave birth to my son, Tobias. I'm not much, but I thought I was a pretty good father to him. I told him to go to church and how to make his own living. He was 18, a mere boy, hardly shaving. And he came to me and proclaimed that he'd gone married. I refused to see him. I never saw him again, and I never saw her, because two days after Heidi was born, they were both killed in a car accident. I'm sure I understand. You'd been hurt very deeply and decided to blame yourself and God. So you went into seclusion. But you mustn't put Heidi into seclusion, Matthias. She's yours, but she's part of the community. She belongs to me. And to the Alps, and the village, and all who love her. I must go now. Goodbye. You make good wine, indeed. Goodbye. I know that the water runs down to the village, Peter. What happens then? Then? Then it falls to the Rhine. Where's the Rhine go? It falls into the Bowdens, eh? Does it stay there, then? I wouldn't know that. Well, who would? Oh, I guess the teacher. He gets it out of books. Don't you know how to read? No. Why not, Peter? I wish you'd stop asking questions. A person must make up his own mind. Either you go to school or you live in the Alps. But you can't do both together. Then I won't learn to read either. Never. means well, we know that, but we don't want to bother with anyone in the village, do we, Heidi? Tell me, are the bells heavy? Oh, it depends how large they are. Can the children really do it alone? If everyone goes together, of course. And suppose one of the children gets sick? Oh, somebody will take his place. But if everyone is there to begin with, there's no one to take over. down to the village just in case. I mean, I could just stand and watch just in case anything happened. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Thank you very much. Now, off to bed, Heidi. Good night. You know, when my husband was alive and we lived on the mountain, he brought me fresh rolls from the village every Sunday morning. It was a special treat for us. Didn't they get hard? Mm, sometimes they did. But then I toasted them in the fireplace and they tasted better than ever. When I'm grown up, I'll bring you fresh rolls every day. You're really a sweet child. Come. You here? We must mark this day on the calendar, Matthias. Grandfather, they gave me a sausage. 
And the pastor let me help with the pulling. Wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, well, let's go home. Is that place still yours? Hmm? Anybody live there? Goodness, no. Nobody could possibly live there. I think any winter now it'll blow away or fall completely to pieces. Don't you know what to do with the hammer and nails? No one's taught him. Anyway, every morning I have to tend my goats. Ah. Well, somebody else will have to repair it. You might want to take in a boarder for the winter. Maybe someone could use it. Yes. You never know. Naturally, not for free. I believe I know who you have in mind. But this fellow I have in mind. Let's think it over carefully. Come, Heidi. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, oh come on. Is it true? Uncle Matthias has come down to the village? Yes, it's true enough. He's been lent a house by Bridget. He's been working on it for some time. It's about a hundred yards up the hill there. You just keep walking and you'll see it. It's an old ruin. You can't miss it. Thank you very much. Oh, if you want to make the afternoon train, I'll take you. I have to be at the station at 4.30 myself. Heidi? Heidi, hurry up. You have a visitor. Your Aunt Edith here from Frankfurt. Really? Mm -hmm. Ho! Ho! Go quickly and say hello to her. She's been with your grandfather for two hours. Please don't tell me I came here from Frankfurt for nothing to this godforsaken place. And it's such an uncomfortable trip. That's too bad. But once and for all, the child stays here. Heidi doesn't belong in a city. She belongs here, in the mountains. Hello, Aunt Dita. So you haven't forgotten me. Hello, Heidi. I have a lovely present for you. A dress. I hope it fits. I never thought you'd grow so much in two years. Thank you. Come, Heidi. Let's go and unwrap it. I really must say I don't understand your attitude. Why do you want to deprive the child? This is a chance in a lifetime. Heidi belongs right here. Yes, yes, she's not yours, though. And when my sister died, God rest her soul, she put Heidi in my charge, don't forget. That's quite true. You were supposed to take care of her. Except you dropped her like a bag of potatoes and brought her to stay with me. But I had to take that job in Frankfurt. I had no money and no place of my own. But now, Heidi can stay in a beautiful house and have all the beautiful things that go with it. She'll have a governess and begin to learn. Anything's possible. It's really so fortunate that, that Consul Sazerman is trying to find a nice girl to be a companion for his daughter, Clara. You're wasting your time. Clara needs Heidi. The poor child can't even walk. She's paralyzed. I can't believe you treat Heidi like that. It's so selfish. No wonder everyone in the village hates you. That's enough. Heidi remains with me. You better go home and don't come back. Oh, this is the nicest dress you've ever had. Mm. Does it fit? Oh, yes. Thank you. I wish I didn't have to leave now, Heidi, dear, but I must be off. Shall we walk a little way together? If I may. Of course. Why don't you do that? You can tell me all about life in the Alps. Mm. Have a nice trip. Oh, thank you. Come. Don't be too long now, Heidi, will you? All right. Thank you. 
The grocer is going to take me to the station. Would you like to come along for the ride? I'll have to ask Grandfather oh, first. Oh, no, 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 no. Come along. We'll get a little surprise for him. You can buy him a present. I'll give you the money. Oh, yes. I'll get him a pipe. Let's hurry up. Where are you going, Heidi? I'm going to the station with my aunt. Come, let's go, Heidi. We must hurry. What's going on? You certainly took your time. It's late. Well, Heidi, you come into the station with us? Yes, I am. Here's the lift. Don't forget. Yes, yes. When is Heidi coming back? Any minute now. But it's pretty far to the station. Who says she went to the station? Heidi did. I just talked to her. Oh, my God. Matthias? Matthias? Well, Heidi, you enjoying the ride? Yes! I love it! Have you seen her? Seen who? Who are you talking about? Heidi, that's what I'm talking about. What's going on here? She's been taken away. My husband drove her to the station with her aunt, that's all. How was he supposed to know she didn't have permission? Huh? Keep, keep. Hurry, keep. hurry. You're sure to catch the five o'clock train. Good. I have to. Look. We don't carry them. I'll be back in about ten minutes. I'll take Heidi home. Huh? She says they don't carry pipes here. No surprise for Grandfather. I know where you can find a lovely pipe, Heidi. Where I live, in Frankfurt. Heidi, why don't you come with me? I'm sure you'd have so much fun. Wouldn't you like a beautiful train ride? But I'll come home tonight, won't I? I'd worry, Grandfather. Oh, but he wouldn't worry when he finds out you're with your aunt. Come on. You sure I can come right back? Come along and have a look. If you don't like it, you can always go back to Grandfather. Mommy? Of course. All right, up you go. Heidi, come on, darling.
Be careful. Now, don't forget, I expect you to behave just like a little lady, quiet and polite. Is the whole house there? Ah, at last. Here we are, Sebastian. Is this it? She's my niece. And she's not an it. She's a little girl, Sebastian. You'd better take her straight to Miss Rotenmark. She's been waiting for you. Is Consul Sazerman upstairs? Went to the opera. Yes? Yeah. Good evening, Clara. Miss Rotenmeyer. I'm sorry we couldn't get here earlier, but the train was very late, Miss Rotenmeyer. This is Heidi. How are you? I see. So this is the child. Come a bit closer. What is your name? You were asked a question. Heidi. Heidi? It's actually Adelheid. After her mother. I see. Adelheid. And how old are you? Eight. Eight? Sebastian, give the child something to eat, will you? Your, your name is Clara? Yes. This is a wheelchair? Mm-hmm. Can you move around in it? Yes. Everywhere? No, not everywhere. Come, Heidi, sit here. You must be very hungry after your long trip. There. Ah, let's take your jacket off. This house is always so warm. Mm, thank you. There. Fresh rolls, not bread. <laughs> what did you say? I said those are fresh rolls. Mm -hmm. Can I have some? Yes, of course. I'll take one home for Bridget. Bridget, naturally. She's a little pixie. <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted was a young girl who could study and play with Clara, and instead you bring me an eight-year-old farm girl. Oh, but... Consul Sazerman will tell you tomorrow what he intends to do. I'm positive he'll send the child home. Rosie. Yes? Please take care of the room for the little girl. Yes, miss. I hope she's neat and clean. Go ahead. Your dessert. Thank you. Thank you. Are you a train conductor, too? Because the man on the train had shiny buttons just like yours. <laughs> she said such funny things. Yeah, <laughs> quite. You may go now, Sebastian. Of course, Miss Rottenmeyer, as you wish. I think I must inform you, Adelheid, of the type of behavior we insist to observe during the time you live in this house, no matter how brief that may be. Oh, Miss Rottenmeyer. Now, please don't interrupt me, Clara. That man who just left the room is a servant here. It's quite improper to conduct a conversation with him. You understand? Please remember that. What are you doing there? I like it this way. Just like a peasant. Who taught you that? My grandfather did. <laughs> it's nothing to laugh about. You must try to remember that you are not in your little village, nor are you in a chicken coop feeding hens. Watch Clara and learn to be a lady. Miss Rotenmeyer, what is it, Clara? I would like a little more dessert. Of course. We don't expect anything of you, except that you behave properly. You have a great deal to learn about manners and general behavior. Only why am I saying this? A little eight-year-old girl, on her first day in a gentleman's house, she couldn't possibly understand. No, especially now. Oh, how rude of her. She must be very tired, Miss Rutenmeyer, after that long ride. She has a lot to learn. Sebastian, will you please call Rosie?
tell her to put her to bed. Very well. Heidi. Come along. Oh, oh it's been quite a day for this little girl. <laughs> Get dressed. Everybody's at breakfast. Where's Aunt Dita? She's in the kitchen working. Here, put Clara's slippers on. Thank you. When you finish dressing, come down right away, huh? Mm-hmm. I should have known she'd be late for breakfast. You'll see for yourself what a peasant girl she is. No upbringing at all. Well, it's all my fault, I suppose. I shouldn't have relied on the cook. Now, oh, Miss Rotenmeyer, I'm sure you're exaggerating. What's the child's name? Heidi. Of course, we'll call her Adelaide. But why? Heidi is a charming name. I should think we must look strange to her. Hand me the marmalade. Of course. Well, Clara, you're so quiet. Do you like Heidi? Yes, Papa. I think she's such fun. Oh, really? What a wonderful way to be. Consul Sesamon, I'm very proud of the responsibility you've entrusted me with. In my opinion, this little girl does not fit in with our way of life. And you mean you'd rather not take the responsibility for that little girl's living with us? Oh, please don't misunderstand what I said. Miss Rodenmeyer, I understand completely. However, on the other hand, my daughter wants Heidi to stay here. And my mother will be here soon. Yes, in just two weeks. I would like to have her opinion. She's pretty objective. She'll decide whether Heidi stays or not. I will respect her opinion. Come in. Good morning. So glad you could come, Doctor. Good morning, Dr. Clark. Good morning. morning. Miss Rottenmeyer, isn't it time for her Hello. lesson? Yes, it is. I'm very glad to see you again. Uh, just finishing breakfast. Have you had yours? Uh, oh, yes, thank you. I have. See you later. Please sit down. I want to tell you something. I'll clear this away. As things stand, I'll be abroad for about three months. Oh? It depends how things develop. Only my business associates know it. No one in the house knows about it. I don't want to upset Clara if I can help it. I want you to keep an eye on things and look after Clara. You know what I mean, Doctor. You know, I wish Clara would try harder. She's been so awfully passive lately. Yes, you're quite right. She seems almost to have given up trying. I wish I could think of a way to give her some hope. Yeah? Ah, <laughs> our little house guest. Come in, come in and have some breakfast. She's going to stay with Clara. Good morning, Heidi. Did you sleep well? Would you like hot chocolate or milk? Or you can have both. Milk. Of course, that's what she drinks yeah. at home. Give me your cup, Heidi. There you are. There's bread and rolls. She likes rolls, Clara told me. Thank you. Are you Consul Sesamon? No, I'm the Consul. This is our good doctor, but I don't think you'll be needing him. You're a healthy girl. You've grown up in the mountains. Yes, yes, and it's nicer than here. She could be right. I like the mountains. I really must go now. We still have many things to discuss. Will you come along with me? Of course. With pleasure. Good. Heidi, when you've finished your milk, you go into the other room with Clara, all right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure I don't have to tell you my stable is at your disposal. My horses need exercise, and so do you. Thank you.
I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? You're bringing your breakfast here with you. Next time you better eat it at the table. All right, finish it then. Come. Don't just stand there. Good morning, Heidi. Good morning. Here. This is your place. Now listen up, lad. Beginning tomorrow morning, I expect you here at precisely nine o'clock. Where's Aunt Dita? This is not the time to ask questions, and especially when your mouth is full of bread. You must pay attention to your lessons. Now then, let's see. Where shall we begin? What have you learned so far? Here, read this. Hmm? We are waiting. For what? For you to read, Adelheid. Read. What is the matter? I'd rather be in the Alps. Oh Lord, you're here now, so start to read. But I can't read. <gasps> what? Heidi, you must be joking. You can't read. No, and Peter can't read either. All right. Will you try to be quiet now? Please, Clara, read your composition. The lightning rod. For centuries, men have tried to control the power of lightning. Oh, Clara, can I have one of those pipes for Grandfather, please? This one's beautiful. Will you let those things be and go back to your seat? Do you hear? Go on. Now, Clara, continue. For centuries, men have tried to control the power of lightning because it causes such terrible damage. Perilous. <laughs> Stop that. Perilous lightning storms and winds have killed thousands of men. I'd like. Papa says Heidi is nicer. Clara, please go on. And women and animals and cause terrible destruction. Human ingenuity, however, has largely succeeded <gasps> in look, taming. Look, a bird! A bird! Adelheid, come back here. Oh, but why is it in a cage? Well, Heidi, we must take care of it. It's so delicate. Why? It has wings. It can fly. Ah, Heidi, you want to help me? Mm -mm. You've lost your tongue. Mm -mm. Well then, what's the matter? Miss Rotenmeier forbid me to talk to you. What do you mean? Miss Rotenmeyer has forbidden you to talk to me. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. Ah, I see. Of course. Now I understand. I'd like to look out of our window, huh? Now tell me, what do you see, Heidi? Nothing. Just a lot of houses. Yes, Frankfurt's a big city. There's nothing but houses? I know what. You and I will go to the roof. Would you like that? You'll see the entire city. Come. Miss Rotenmar and Clara have gone downstairs so they won't catch us. Will I see the mountains from there? Why not yourself? Come, Heidi. There you are. Beautiful, isn't it? There's the cathedral spire. Mm-hmm. And from there, can you see the mountains? Maybe. I've never gone to the top myself. You must go back to your room now. Come. Oh, no! Yes, yes. Don't argue. We don't want them to find us. Good. Ouch!
evening. Into the library, John. Is Heidi upstairs? Yes, sir. She must have run away. How could this happen, Sebastian? Rosie, come down here. Council Sazerman will be furious with all of us. It's unforgivable. You say it's unforgivable. It's you who scared the child away. I scared her? How dare you speak to me like that? Go back to the kitchen. What's happened? Where's Heidi? She's disappeared. What? I, I don't think she can be far. I'll go and look for her. You'd better stay here. Rosie, you go and find her. Yes, I'm going. A fine thing. Fine thing. Come on, I'm going to show you the way home. I know very well where the Sazemans live. Can you imagine that? A nice little girl like you, climbing up to the top all by yourself. You could have been hurt or something. Ah, I'll wait. I'm going to show you something you'll like. sweet. Why don't you take one? There. He likes you. I can't stand this much longer. Something must have happened to her. Well, do you think she could have... There's been no report to the police on her. I've been calling all the hospitals in town. Nothing. Oh, phoning them. What good does that do? They never give you any information. Why did Rosie go looking for her instead of you? But you said... Sebastian, please go and look for her. I wanted to, but... Please do. There you are, Heidi. Come on. You've no idea what a scare you gave us. But I have Now, to. don't bother to tell me. I know where you went. But there were still no mountains anywhere. Don't say a word to Miss Rotenmeyer or anyone else about me taking you up to the roof or showing you the spire of the cathedral. Mm. Right now, not a word. I know. Come in. She's back. Heidi! Thank God. Where have you been all day? I went to the top. To the top? The top of what, Heidi? The cathedral. The cathedral? You really mean you went up there alone? Where did you get that idea? I, uh... Now, come on, Heidi. Someone must have put it into your head. Now. Why did you go to the cathedral? Tell me. What were you looking for up there? I wanted to see my mountains again. Your mountains? And I want to say something. I can't help it. I want to go home today. What? You want to go home? Yes. Oh, but Heidi, I want you to stay with me. I don't mean to hurt you. Oh. Do you think you can go away whenever you please? Yes. That's what she told me. Who told you? Aunt Dita. Are you sure of that? Yes. She told me I'd just stay a few days, and she said I could go home whenever I wanted to. And I want to now. Of course I want to stay with Clara, but there aren't any mountains here, or trees, or goats, and besides which I want to live with Grandfather. I see one thing. You can talk when you want to. 
When I ask you something important, you won't open your mouth. Are you trying to make fun of me? No, Miss Roten, I... I mean... Quiet. I don't want to hear one more word. I'm just about to lose my patience. Oh, look, a kitten! Sebastian! Can you call it? Sebastian, will you get rid of this animal? Oh, can't we keep it? Entirely out of the question. Take it away. No, I won't let Come, you... Come, Heidi. Why won't you let us keep Come it? Come on. Oh. oh. Come, Heidi. Hey. Hey. Oh, please let us keep it. Oh, please, Sebastian. What's the matter? Dita. Sebastian, don't be mean. Heidi, nothing's going to happen to your kitten. I'll find a place for it. Are you sure? You can depend on me. Don't we trust each other? You'd better go inside now. Cross your heart. Listen, I promised you, didn't I? Would you kindly explain how you could tell Heidi she could leave whenever she wanted? I'm sorry I brought her. Yes, no more sorry than I am, though. If that's how it is, I'll send her home right now. Good, you do just that. <laughs> Dita, I believe you've forgotten your place. I suggest that you leave this instant. May I ask what you're doing now? Isn't it obvious? Looking for another job. There are plenty of want ads. Ah, here's one. Yes, a good job at the university. Don't be ridiculous. Oh. Go on, get back to the kitchen. Only if you promise to be nice to her. I didn't bring her here to get hurt. I hope that's absolutely clear. Right, Heidi? You told me a lie. That I could go back to Grandfather. Oh, please don't go away, Heidi. Papa said you'd be like a sister to me. Oh, enough. I can't bear these scenes. I've been trying to think quite objectively, Mrs. Stasen. I don't mean to imply that the child is unintelligent. I wouldn't say that. Quite the contrary. She learns quickly and she's articulate. Simply, it's just that she's wrong in this house. A farm girl and so stubborn, too. Mm -hmm. Why, you'd think a, a proper young lady worthy of our Clara would want to study and learn to read. It seems they don't read in the Alps. Well, that does seem strange. I was so certain that you'd understand me, and that I you... understand. Bring Heidi to me at once, if you please. As you wish, Mrs. Sazeman. Clara. <laughs> oh, Grandma, please, don't send Heidi away. She makes everything such fun. Even the lessons are more interesting. Now, Heidi. You haven't forgotten what I told you yesterday. When Mrs. Sazerman asks you a question, you must answer politely. Yes, Miss Roten Meyer. And if she asks you if you want to go home, you should tell her the truth. You can be honest with her. Yes. In heaven's name, what's this? Don't worry, my darling. I'll see what we can do. Go on, Heidi. Here she is. Here's our little house guest. Ah, uh, hi. Come here, to me. Good evening, Mrs. Sazerman. Now, Heidi, don't address me like that. Call me Grandma, all right? Oh. To illustrate what I told you just a while ago, I found these in her closet just now, and she says she's saving them for someone in her village. <laughs> oh, my heavens. My poor child, they're as hard as rocks. How do you expect anyone to eat these? They'll be all right. Bridget toasts them on the fire. Then they're even better. That sounds very logical. But tell me, Heidi, do you mean to say you don't want to learn to read? That's very peculiar. Well, you see, Peter says that if I learn to read, I don't belong in the Alps. Ah, uh, I think that Peter was wrong. Do you mean that? Grandmas always speak the truth. Now, now, would you like me to read to you the story of the wise old shepherd? Please, do, Grandma. Don't go away, Miss <sighs> Rotenmeyer. You may listen to it. <laughs> now then. 
Once upon a time, there lived a shepherd who was known throughout the land for his wisdom and honesty. And one day, the king was riding through the country, his golden crown on his head. When he met the shepherd and said, Can you answer the following three questions? If you're truly able to, I'll reward you generously. Do you know the number of stars in the sky? Without a moment's hesitation, the shepherd said, There are as many stars in the sky as there are grains of sand along the beaches of the whole world. Nobody could count all that. That's right. And now tell me, how long would it take a man to journey all around the world? Well, what do you think the wise shepherd answered? I'll tell you. If the sun is always above your head, no doubt you will be back in 24 hours. And here is the last question. And no man has answered it correctly to this day. Exactly how long is eternity? How can one measure it? The shepherd had to think for a moment. Then he said, somewhere on this earth is a mountain. A mountain as high as Echo is? Oh, higher than any mountain in the whole world. And every thousand years a bird flies over it and it sharpens its beak on the top. And when the bird has succeeded in grinding the entire mountain into pieces, then exactly one second of eternity has passed. Ah, I see you enjoyed that fairy tale. Oh, yes, yes, it's good. This book is full of stories like that. Here, it's a present. Wouldn't it be wonderful to read books for yourself, Heidi? Tomorrow, Miss Ruffenmeyer will start teaching you to read. In a few weeks, I'll be here again. I'm going to see how much progress you've made by then. You're going to learn to read so that you can go home and teach Peter to read. I will learn to read. You'll see. from Frankfurt. Oh. How do you know? My mother knows. She could tell by the postmark. My mother sends her regards. She says you must come and visit us again. Mm -hmm. She says no one in the village is mad at you anymore. Here's a change. I keep it at your. Thank you. Is it from that aunt of hers? No. Who is it from, then? Well, from a uh, Mrs. Sazel. She's the sick girl's grandmother. Do you think Heidi will come back soon? No. You see, Mrs. Sazel says, Oh, why don't you read it yourself? But it's your letter. But, uh... I would like to know what it says. Well, it's about how Heidi was homesick the first few days. Very homesick. But lately she seems to be a lot happier here with us. She's making excellent progress with her education and she's especially good at figures. Lately, she's even developed into Avid reader. I guess I'll go now. Do you think this means that... That Heidi has forgotten us? It's we who may have to forget Heidi. Go on, Sebastian. Children, Sebastian has something wonderful to tell you. Something really exciting has happened. A foe was born last night. Really? Well, until now, Consul Sazerman has always chosen the names of his horses. Only he's far away now, isn't he? I thought, children, you too might choose a name. And after you've found a beautiful name for our new horse, you can visit the stable. Oh. How about Roland? Roland is charming. Only the horse is a young lady. 
I'll find one for you. In the book that Grandma gave me, there's a story about a white horse. Here. Here. Just as the morning rose, young Prince Dagobert went to saddle his magnificent horse called Astrid. Yes, Astrid. Astrid, that's wonderful. Astrid? I never thought of that. That is a nice name. First thing in the morning, John will take the two of you. Thank you. Where is she, John? Back there with her mother. Can you see? Yeah. Astrid, come over here. Come, Astrid, come over here. I believe this is your kitten. Oh, it's grown so big. Have a good time. I'll be back. Mm-hmm. I think I'll go in there. Maybe you shouldn't. They might kick you. Oh, they wouldn't do that. interrupting your song and dance, but there are a few equally important things to be done around here. In the morning, we begin our spring cleaning. Consul Saisman will be returning at the end of the week, and I want everything immaculate, spotless. Is that clear? Go on. If you can stand, then you can walk, Clara. Well, the table's pretty close, isn't it? Go on. Try it. Good. You can do it. Wait, I'll bring the chair closer. Now you see you can walk. Yes, I can. But it makes me so tired. I'll try once more tomorrow. And what's more, Clara, when you can walk, you can come to the Alps to visit me. It was Clara's room. Something must have fallen. I'll go see. All right. Come. I'll help you back to bed. Hmm? <gasps> oh, Rosie, Sebastian, 
Oh, Dr. Glasses. What happened? Clara. Of you to come. <laughs> Good to see you. Mm, our little Swiss friend is here, too. Hello. I have a present for you. It's in my baggage. Yes, let's get home quickly. We don't want Clara to wait. She's all right? Oh, yes, fine. That's good. Yes, yes. I'll ring the bell. Sebastian, is everything all right? Yes. Where is Clara? Rudolph? Yes. Yeah. Oh, come on in. Miss Rotenmeyer? Bless you. I can't believe my eyes. You can walk again, Papa. <laughs> Only his wife would live to see this moment. My good friend Clarkson will pay for this. Playing such a joke on me. <laughs> oh, but you don't have to carry me anymore. Just today, the last time, Clara. Somebody might have let me know. We thought we'd like to give you a big surprise. Well, you succeeded. Yes. Come and sit down. But I can stand. Oh, no. You mustn't try to do it all at once. Huh? So, my friend, now tell me. How did you accomplish it? I would like to take the credit. Only I can't. You must thank Heidi. She did it. Heidi? Yeah. Heidi! Let me give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> now, first a little token. The rest comes later. Ah, this one? Ah, yes, this is for Clara. Thank you, Papa. You're welcome. And these? These two are for you. Thank you, Consul Sesemann. You mustn't say Consul Sesemann. From now on, you must say Papa to me. You belong to us. You are my second daughter. We'll never let you go. That's what I want. Tomorrow, I'll see my lawyer and have him get to work on it. Beautiful. Oh, Japanese. Thank you. Very pretty. Rosie. Take Heidi up to bed. Pleasant dreams. Good night, Consul Sesemann. Good night, Heidi. Good night, Heidi. Come. Good night. Oh, look. Isn't she sweet? Yes, she is. Rosie? Yes? Do they mean it, that I'm staying here? They mean it. You're very lucky. There are mountains and a lake. I wouldn't mind going to Switzerland, but before that I must go to New York. Rosie! Yes? You get undressed. 
and then go to bed. All right, darling? Mm. Good night. Good night. Plenty of good wine and beer in the kitchen, but that would hardly be appropriate now, would it? A miracle calls for champagne. And you really are in earnest about adopting Heidi? Of course I am. Why not? You're quite certain that it would be the best thing for her. Why, you must be joking. The daughter of Consul Sesemann would enjoy certain advantages, and soon Heidi will realize the opportunities we're offering her. But to you, Doctor. Yes, what is it? So sorry to disturb you. It's Heidi. She's tossing and turning and talking in her sleep. It's probably too much excitement for her. I thought maybe Dr. Klassen could take a look at her. Nothing serious. She seems to be very feverish. She must be running a high temperature. But why so suddenly? She was all right earlier on. I think this might be the reason. Homesick for Switzerland? Of course, it's only an assumption. Can you do anything to bring the fever down? Put cold compressors on her forehead. At times, the old-fashioned remedy is a better than medicine. All right, Doctor. you do that when you know Heidi is resting? Sorry, miss. How is she? She's been sleeping continuously for three days. Right now the doctor's with her. <laughs> Did you sleep well? You must have had a nice dream. Yes. I was dreaming. Good. What about? About a little house. I see. In the mountains and the pastures. Tell me... Isn't it too quiet and lonely up there, Heidi? It's the most wonderful place in the world. Ah. I must see it for myself, then. Will you come with me? Mm. Well, we must arrange it, Heidi. I believe you'll be all right pretty soon. What's the news from Milan? Uh -huh. Thank you. Telegraph Grimaldi, we accept. Hmm? Very well, I can't speak now. I'll call later. Well? What's wrong with her? I'll tell you quite simply. You don't have to study medicine for now. She needs to go home. But... She has everything she wants here. And what will Clara do without her? I'm afraid you don't understand. Heidi is just as sick as, as Clara was. Only it's here. I understand, but there must be a remedy. How about psychotherapy? The remedy exists. A prescription isn't necessary. Hmm? One ticket from here to Switzerland. Send the child home? What about Clara? Clara? Out of the question. Anyway, I've arranged for her adoption already. 
There's a train leaving every morning at 10.35. And I guarantee the treatment will work 100%. Goodbye. Get this out of the way so we can have more room. What are you looking for? The book. The book Grandma gave me. Here it is. This is very important to me. And the rose for Bridget. You'll be there in the morning. Yes. And Grandfather doesn't even know it. You coming with me to the station? No. Why not? I might start to cry and Papa doesn't like it. He always wants me to be brave. Ah, oh, but there's no reason to cry. After you finish the exercises, you'll join me in Switzerland. You'll let me sleep in your hayloft? Of course you can. There isn't any other place. You love everyone there, and Nanny, and Billy. What do you want with that old hat? You always wear a hat in the house. Oh. All right, children. Come with me. All right, Sebastian, you'll be in charge of everything. Peter, I know you'll take care of Heidi on the trip. The train leaves at 10.35. John has the ticket. Clara, you're doing fine. Goodbye for now, my dear Heidi. Well, that's enough. We don't want too many goodbyes. Goodbye, Heidi. Got everything? Oh, no! I beg your pardon. I think we have to hurry. Okay, Sebastian. Can I take this for Grandfather, please? They don't sell them at the station anymore. Of course. It's perfect for your grandfather, and say hello for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Remember, Clara and I have a deal with you. We'll be going to Switzerland yeah. to join you in a couple of weeks. How do you like that? We'll both come. I promise. Oh, fine. And now, what did you promise me? Should I? Go ahead. We ought to see Aunt Bridget. Why first? We can't carry the luggage all the way up there. All right, I'll run ahead and wait for you. You think that Matthias knows that Heidi's here? I don't think so. We'd better go and tell the pastor about it. Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful coat you're wearing. You look just lovely in it. And your mm. hat. This? Hmm. Yes, but it's not for the Alps. I brought my old one. Is this all yours, Heidi? Mm-hmm. And this is for you. For me? Rose. You didn't forget. No. Oh. And this is for you. It's a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you stay here for the night? 
Oh, no, Aunt Lisa. We have to go and see Grandfather. Yes, you must go, Heidi. Only, I'm not used to these heights. I'm afraid I'm dizzy already. No, why? In Frankfurt, there aren't any mountains, only houses. Mm. If you don't mind, why don't you go ahead by yourself, huh? Mm-hmm. I think that Heidi is old enough to go there alone. Mm -hmm. And Peter will follow you later with all your luggage. Yes, that's right. Give my regards to Grandfather. One day I'll come back and we'll all be together. Uh, I... I wanted you to be happy in the city, Heidi. But, Aunt Dita, you mustn't cry anymore. Mm. Everything's all mm. right. Mm. I'll see your aunt on her way, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Aunt Dita. Don't you walk with us? Hmm. There he is. Grandfather! No. No, Heidi. Look here. He doesn't know that you're back. You go and sneak into the house. Do that. While he's in the stables. And I'll prepare him. Go now. You. We just thought that you'd been alone for a while. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. We all thought that you'd join us. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, don't you want to return their greeting? We've all of us come here together, Matthias. We never understood why you were so bitter towards everyone, so we kept away from you. But now we understand much better. The pastor told us everything. I think it's time we made up. Come on, let's shake hands. And what do the women say? What we all in the village say. Tomorrow, come to church and you'll see that you're welcome. We'll expect you there. It's time to forget now. And don't count on it. Come, let's go. He knows now how we feel. Oh. Goodbye, Matthias. I wish you'd come to church. It would take a miracle. Oh.